Okay. Larry Pratt, Gunners of America, is joining us. We've been covering this for two years. Um, the fact, in fact, six years ago, Sella Castillo, DEA retired agent, said that th that the U.S. government uh, was helping ship guns into Mexico to destabilize and even name names uh, and went over where the training was happening and they tried to hire him for this. Then two years ago, he came out and said, Obama has accelerated it. They're helping get illegal guns into Mexico to blame it on gun shows. He, he, that, he was on record. ATF then raided him, charged him for selling two shotguns at a gun show legally. <laughs> this was a former um, sniper in the Army. Um, uh, DEA agent retired. I mean, they sent him to jail for this. That's, so, so we were on this two years ago. Then Obama and Holder start saying, our guns are causing what's happening in Mexico. We got to have the assault weapons ban again. You can only sell one gun at a gun shop. You got to report to us, even though it's not the law. So we, we knew they were d doing this, uh, this, 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 this operation, blaming the Second Amendment for uh, what's happening in Mexico when they have a total gun ban down there. And the cartels have got grenade launchers, armored vehicles. Most of their weapons are fully auto. And they got fleets of aircraft all over the world that you know, the drug dealers do. And so all of this is going on. So it didn't make a lot of sense six years ago. Why would they be shipping the guns in? Well, they wanted to blame the Second Amendment. And that's what you get from the ATF. But now we know in the last two years, this was directly ordered, according to the ATF, by the Attorney General. When the ATF director got on the hot seat, he now has broken and uh, with the establishment and said, look, I'm not going to hang for this. We were ordered to do this. And of course the ATF was. They wouldn't do this on their own. Uh, now, the new report is U.S. government openly admits arming Mexican drug gangs with 30,000 firearms. That's at Infowars.com by Mike Adams from Natural News. Uh, and continuing uh, here, and then we're going to our guest, uh, the real expert on this, Larry Pratt, a New York Post. Fast and Furious gets hotter for Holder. Here's another one. Breaking 43 weapons in Phoenix traffic stop linked to Holder's gun running scandal. Fox Nation. It's also been linked to police officers' death. Uh, this is a big deal. And we got Nixon online to Congress and to investigators. We've got Holder, who ran the Oklahoma City cover-up. That came out in emails as Deputy Attorney General for Mr. I mean, Miss, Miss Reno, sorry. Uh, and so Larry Prant, the President of Gunners of America, nonprofit lobbying organization formed in 75 to preserve and defend the Second Amendment. The NRA is a sellout group. They've proven that. They would never talk about them until recently because it got so obvious. Good NRA members with the leadership. Is, is basically playing possum. Without gun owners, we would not have a Second Amendment right now. Uh, he's a former member of the Virginia House of Delegates, uh, and it's gunowners.org. This is a big deal. We've got him for this segment and the next. Joining us from Virginia, uh, outside D.C., they're at Gun Owners Headquarters. Am I right in saying this could bring down the entire uh, Justice Department, Obama, and, and once and for all really show wh what, who the victim disarmament crowd is? Alex, when this began, uh, the media was ignoring it. And they're still trying their best to ignore it. The Democrat media, I should say, because they're just a, an adjunct of the Democrat Party that's in power. And they didn't want to embarrass their guys. But it's gotten to the point now, and it's been covered enough by uh, some of the mainstream, like uh, Fox and a little bit by CBS, uh, that we're beginning to hear even some of the politicians talk about uh, these guys need to be put on the stand. Uh, Alan West, a new representative from South Florida, called for an independent prosecutor. Uh, I, I think it's probably important that we look at the words that we use. I don't think it can be an independent prosecutor. I believe that would require the cooperation of the, the criminals themselves in the Justice Department. But there is a way to get at this the way the representative wants to do it. And that's an independent counsel Put him in the sergeant of arms' office. There's money for, for doing this. Uh, have his own staff and his own office space. And then he's basically in charge of the Capitol Hill police. That's actually what the sergeant of arms, uh, one of his responsibilities. I think about 10,000 of them. And they can arrest within the District of Columbia for any crime that was committed in the Capitol. Well, perjury would be one of those crimes. And Representative Issa, the head of the, the uh, Oversight Committee, has been talking, well, he, he uses his words very carefully, but he said, I don't think uh, Mr. Holder was truthful when he testified. Well, <laughs> probably the flip side of that is he is a liar. And uh, I, this thing is getting to the point 
where the pot might start to boil. Uh, because so for those that don't know, the head of the ATF said no, he has perjured himself because he knows he's about to get his, his head politically chopped off. The Mexican government wants to prosecute in Mexico the ATF people that did this. Remember, three months ago, they tried to claim the ATF officers that blew the whistle and did their job, who were honorable, that they were liars. Uh, we know the head of the ATF told Congress, hey, I never knew about this. Now we have his emails. Now he's and now uh, Holder saying he didn't know. The head of the ATF saying he did. Well, obviously Holder knew. For two years, as you know, we talked about two years ago, their strategy is to blame what's happening in, on Mexico on the Second Amendment, shutting down gun shows, running fake stings with illegals. This is their whole Justice Department program. Yeah, the, uh, co the uh, ranking minority, Elijah Cummins, on Mr. Uh, ISIS committee, uh, made a valiant attempt at spinning this by saying, well, this shows that uh, we need more gun control. The ATF needs more power. That's, the, that's why they had to resort to this particular program, because we haven't given them the tools. I think I've articulated as best anybody could what he was saying, and it doesn't pass the laugh test. I'm sorry. Uh, this is hopefully not only a time when we might see some impeachments of the, the attorney general and uh, one or two of the assistant attorney general, but the dissolution of the agency, but that won't do the job if we don't extirpate the law itself. It's the, what we have seen is that unconstitutional gun law leads to abuses of power such as we're talking about right now. And we don't get it to go away by transferring the functions to some other department in the FBI or other place in the Justice Department. Not only do we need to get rid of this agent, uh, to get rid of the agency, but the law itself has to be on the block. We shouldn't have been regulating guns in Washington, it you know what what part of shall not be infringed? Don't they understand? Well said. Now, now for those that just joined us and don't know the whole history of this, this is a big deal to have Holder being accused by the head of the ATF of perjuring himself, and that being you know in 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 major newspapers. I mean, uh, something has to give on this, but the ATF has a history of when they're under political pressure and about to be abolished, they go start a new Waco. They go start a new distraction so that everybody rallies around them. The beauty of this one is that uh, this one has gotten out of their control. And I, I agree with you that that would have been their tendency to try to set up a Waco. But now nobody believes them at all. And I think the dynamic may have actually shifted. I didn't think I would ever see something like this. Now, where it's actually going to end up, that's another matter. But, you know, these guys have already violated another law. They fired a whistleblower last week, Vincent Cephalou, who was blowing the whistle about the misdeeds of Fast and Furious, the, the current code name for this, and uh, that's uh, that's just amazing that they would do that while all this is going on. Uh, it, it's it, If he w were not in the public eye, that might be one thing, but the guy's uh, been on television. Uh, you, you can uh, see him at uh, Fox News in the William Lajeunesse archive. Um, it's just extraordinary what they're willing to do. And I, I think that, um, oh, we also found out yesterday that uh, the head of the Tampa office for the ATF was running guns into Honduras. Why Honduras? Well, they want to blame us for Honduras, too, because the gangs in Honduras have been starting to work with the uh, Sinaloa uh, cartel out of Mexico. And um, <laughs> I guess we want our fingerprints on that one, too. Incredible. Incredible. We, we're, we're translating the, this Mexican TV right now, but it's being reported down there that one of the top Los Cetis people that's been captured is saying they purchased firearms directly from the U.S. government, including shoulder-fired U.S. Uh, rockets. Uh, and that's what we were told five, six years Larry ago. Pratt, I mean, Larry, I, uh, you know, you're, you're calm about this. I'm calm somewhat about it. But I don't think I have words to describe how big a deal this is that it's actually uh, mainly Rupert Murdoch's outfits reporting on it, but it's confirmed. I mean, I see what the Congress people are saying. It's in some other newspapers. I, I just went online during the break, and I found a Mexican source for what you were talking about. This guy by the a nickname of El Momito, one of the uh, um, leaders of the... Uh, Los Cetas. Uh, the Cetas, yeah, has been uh, uh, blabbing. I'd seen something yesterday, and it didn't have the information that you pointed out that the sales were actually in some cases being made by the government itself 
And that's big stuff. Uh, that is a major piece of information uh, that ought to have heads rolling all the way down the line. I mean, it's one thing when, it, when an agent who's a good guy is being told to do something that he just knows in his gut isn't right and it breaks the law and all kinds of procedures he's ever followed as a cop. But when he's involved in making the sale itself, that's now I, we did know that there was a paid FBI informant that was doing a lot of these sales. And he was, <laughs> this is like the Keystone Cops to a point, that he was being surveilled by the ATF. And they had no idea that the guy was a flipped drug dealer who was working for the FBI to stay out of jail. <laughs> now, that may be the way the guns were getting in, into Mexico. I'm not, I haven't read enough of the article to know exactly if he gives details. But yeah, th that puts their fingerprints even more closely on... Uh, yeah, uh, Mexican TV is reporting that this uh, top founder of Los Zetas basically said what Sully Castillo told us six years ago and then again two years ago, and he was a former top DEA agent in Latin America, that, that the U.S. government, i.e. DEA people, uh, had been hired and were, and, were, and were training and giving weapons to Los Zetas, and here it is on, uh, on, on, on Mexican television. So this goes a lot, lot deeper, and we're going to be getting a report on that uh, out because we're also having some of the Spanish checked uh, first at infowars.com and prisonplanet.com uh, in the next few hours. But you know, I tell you, Larry, uh, I mean, this this could be the thing that would bring them down. I mean, I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, the the magnitude of the head of the ATF saying Holder's lying. And what this guy was saying yesterday uh, is something that we also knew about, namely. The Border Patrol was in on this. That meeting two years ago that set up this particular Fast and Furious program included Border Patrol along with FBI and uh, DEA. And what Momito was saying, that this Seta was saying, is that there had to be some kind of a deal with the U.S. to get trunk loads of arms across the border. You, you, you never hear about uh, trunk loads of arms being popped, and, and yet if, if we do find drugs going from time to time. So this is pretty strange that this was being allowed to happen. Uh, and of course, now we know why. The, the Border Patrol was in on it too. Well, this was all done to frame the Second Amendment, and, and we know for two years, Holder's been saying, get rid of the Second Amendment, ban the semi-autos, shut down the gun shows, uh, do all of this because of what's happening in Mexico, and they knew full well the cartels were bringing in the guns, fully auto grenade launchers from other governments, other groups, but they needed to have lots of weapons showing up that were from gun shops, so they did it themselves. I mean, is this not a form of stage terror, uh, a false flag, Larry Pratt? Well, and I think the Mexicans would not only second that motion, but say it was an act of war against our country. And I don't think much of the Mexican government, but hey, uh, this is not exactly the way to deal with anybody. This is, it is monstrous that a policy would be developed with knowledge of forethought that unnamed people were very likely to end up dead. That was the warning of one of the whistleblowers. Are you ready to go to funerals? They knew what was going to happen. Of course they knew. And they just didn't care because they had ulterior policy design. We can't, you know, we don't have the smoking gun on that. Uh, what, we don't have a transcript from the meeting. But there's no other plausible explanation for something this bizarre, something this wicked to be done. Well, we know that um, they want our guns. They want to end yep. our, our, our culture of liberty and freedom, and they will do anything they can, including staging uh, this false flag attack to, to get the Second Amendment. It's the M.O. of these people. Larry Pratt, thank you so much for joining us. It's good to be with you. Thanks, Alex. Appreciate folks going to gunowners.org and uh, staying posted on Absolutely, this. my friend.